Hi there, I'm Black Pride, broadcasting out of the UK into your homes. Welcome to my channel. First time you're passing through, you can click the subscribe button, you can click the um, thumbs up or thumbs down, whatever meets your fancy. Um, today I thought I would talk about the inner dictator. It's only because I was doing another video and I started talking about the inner dictator and I thought, hmm, that might be a good subject to discuss. I mean, how many of us know about our inner dictator or even know that we have one? Do you know what one is? Well, the inner dictator is that voice that chastises you, that dictates everything you do during the day. It could be based on previous experiences. It's got no validity, no rationale at all. It just dictates, tells you how bad you are, tells you that you're not good enough, and just goes on and on and on, and you just sit and listen to it. And a lot of people do listen to it because they don't realise that they can actually challenge it. Now, I wrote down some notes. That voice that keeps dictating to you, that tells you you are not good enough, that is your inner dictator. It tells you, you need to do more. No matter what you do, you need to do more. It's always pushing. You know, like what dictators are like. It's just like always having a go at you. And you just sit there and you actually take it in as fact. You actually believe what that voice is saying. But that voice is coming from past experiences what people have said and isn't necessarily true. A lot of times it's not true because you were so young and you've grown up and you've grown out of it, but you've still got the memory there and it still sometimes comes to the surface. Um, it, it, can, it disciplines us, it punishes us and it confines us to a mental prison. And when I say it confines you to a mental prison, because you think a certain way and you have this rigid thinking and you can't think outside the box, you're not flexible. That is why you're in a prison. Because anybody who can't think out of the box is not going to listen to anyone. They're not going to listen to anyone's opinion. They're not going to think any what anybody says is valid. They've got this fixed mindset that tells them what is right, what is wrong, what should be done, how it should be done, and that's it. There's no room for negotiation. And sometimes when you see these um, people, these ma manical people, who believe that their faith or their religion is the right one, they have a fake, some of them have a fixed mindset. The, the mindset that says, because it's written in this way, that is what it means. There's no flexibility. There's no open-mindedness. There's no room for negotiation or discussion. They have whatever they have in their mind, usually, and sometimes it's negative, and they just believe it's true. So, you can force your dictator to take a step back. You can stop thinking the worst, and you can catch the voice in its tracks. I've found that a lot of times, you know, now I'm a bit more aware um, sometimes if I say something to myself, I'll catch it and I'll say, hey, man, that's not right. You know, and I'll switch, my, I'll switch the way I say something so that it's not derogatory, it's not putting me down, it's not making me feel like I'm a failure, it's not making me feel as though I can't make good decisions. So I knock it back now. Anytime something comes up, this isn't the old Myrna anymore. This is the one who is aware of all that negative programming that's been instilled over the years, changing it so that you can build up your confidence. You, you actually find out who you are and who you are is OK. So, like I said in a previous video, the fact that you might not be such a wonderful person, that is OK. And it's about, you know, being open to that and accepting that. Each moment we notice anything at all about what we are thinking, we need to take some meaningful breaths so that we can we have time to change it. It's, it's, a, it's called mindfulness, actually, although mindfulness is a bit more of a process than what I'm talking about. Um, be kind to yourself when the voices come. You can listen to them and say, yeah, OK, you're saying that I'm not good enough. That's your opinion dictator it's not mine 
So push off. Um, empathize with that part of you that wants control. A lot of us, we just want to control things. And when we're out of control, we feel totally worthless. And it, it's that inner, that it's that desire to control that makes us have that fixed mindset. Because if you can believe that the way you think is true and real, and anything that's not reliable or anything that's all over the place or, you know, like some people uh, who have a fixed mindset set, if, they, if somebody changes their mind, it throws them completely out and they think that person is untrustworthy, they think that person's unreliable, but it's to do with their mindset, how they think. Now, if they have, if they were of the opinion that, okay, that person's changed his or her mind, they're entitled to. Instead of thinking that person has changed his or her mind and they should not change their mind. You see what I mean? And if you're, if you, if you're stuck in that mindset that people should do a certain thing or should not do a certain thing, you build up resentment, anger, frustration. And that is all a part of the in, inner dictator. Um, what else have I got here? Who is responsible for allowing? Hmm, got the wrong thing here. <laughs> so much of it, much of our, uh, much of the voices of the inner dictator seem justified. Um, so what it's saying here is try to forgive those who you perceive have hurt or betrayed you. Because what happens with that inner dictator, if it believes somebody has done another person wrong, or not another person has done you wrong. Now, if you believe that someone has done you wrong, and it, your mindset doesn't give you any other um, explanation apart from that person has done me wrong, then you're not going to forgive that person because you believe that what your mindset is true, your mindset is real. There's no, there's no kind of liaising with that. There's no negotiation. It's black and white. Wrong. No forgiveness. You see what I mean? So, um, but that is a part of that inner dictator, that rigid thinking. Um, just for a moment, could you let go of wanting to control yourself? A lot of people get terrified if they can't control the situation. You know? They just feel as though they need to be in control all the time. And the thought of not being able to control what happens to them or what's going to happen next. And that's why they have such rigid um, programs usually. It's usually quite a rigid program they have. And, you know, high expectations of themselves. Um, can you try not feeling embarrassed about awkward situations? People with um, inner dictators and rigid mindsets, they get easily embarrassed in awkward situations because they're out of control. They don't know how to control a situation that's not going how they want it to go. So they kind of get a bit, oh, they feel embarrassed and, you know, as though the eyes are on them, they become defensive and all that kind of stuff. So it's about letting go of control. It's okay to feel resentment. But let your inner dictator make you feel differently. So, yeah, you're going to have these feelings of resentment and anger and frustration, but you don't let them control you. That's what this is saying. Um, what else is this? Mental rigidity. That's what I was talking about. Some people see it as a virtue, a sign of trust, integrity and reliability. They get angry at people who change their opinions or change their minds. They believe them to be opportunists and weak-minded. You see, that's what I was saying before, because if you are of a certain mindset that you believe that somebody who... Um, change their minds. Change, somebody who changes their opinion is... Um, is... Um, bad person then for want of a better word evil bad um like they said opportunist weak-minded and they see that somebody who doesn't change their mind and who doesn't have a change of opinion as trustworthy and have an integrity you can understand how 
the dynamics will play out in any kind of social interaction. So um, if somebody has a different opinion from, like you're both watching a program, somebody has a different opinion to you then, you're going to get all agitated and you're going to think, hey, this person is a bit off, you know, actually they don't have any intelligence, they don't have this, they're stupid, because they're not thinking how I think. It's almost as though people with rigid thinking believe they have a superior way of thinking. Um, what else is it? It's important to know what causes you to be stuck in your ways. But there again, familiarity is safe. It's safe when you know what's going to happen. It's safe when you've got things planned. And um, yeah, when you know what's going on, you, you feel safe because you've got, a, a, you've got relative control. But if you don't know, this is when this rigid thinking comes in and it creeps into your thinking and attitude. If you're a rigid person and if you find a situation or a person distasteful, most likely you will hold on to that opinion and keep giving negative or unpleasant meaning or a label to that person. So that person hasn't got a chance, no chance of reform, no chance of redemption, nothing. Because if you've got rigid thinking, no matter what that person does, no matter how that person changes, you're going to have that viewpoint of them. Uh, let me see. Um, on the contrary, if you find a person who is friendly and to your liking, you may cherish that relationship and tend to ignore all the data that may suggest otherwise or make you feel uncomfortable. That is a rigid, per that is a rigid thinking person who likes somebody. And if they like somebody and they have rigid thinking, they're going, all their thought processes are going to um, complement or endorse their way of thinking. So nobody will be able to tell them that that person isn't a good person. If they, if they think somebody's doing right and whatever they're watching um, tells them that that person is doing right, somebody could come and say, oh, well, you know, I've got a funny feeling about that. And they will not entertain it at all. And with that kind of mindset, you, can't, you can get taken over by people. You can take, be taken in by people who you believe um, are doing something gratuitous for the, for, for an, or, you know, for the community or a charity or whatever. You won't be able to see their, their flaws. Um, so mental rigidity limits your growth and your opportunities to know and learn. In people, it manifests in numerous ways as habits, routines, likes, dislikes, fear, prejudice, reluctant to listen and irrational behaviour. As they become attached to their past and live by rigid choices, they dislike to change, move with the times or acknowledge their current reality. So people who have mental rigidity, they're very routine. Um, and they don't like to listen. They don't like to listen purely because they have this mindset of what the way they think is the correct way of thinking. So they don't want to listen to anybody else's point of view. So, um, and because of that, they they don't grow. They just stay in the same mindset. They stay in the same place. Um, yeah, they don't evolve. And, you know, time passes and as time passes, things change. They get stuck. Um, well, they're not moving with the times. That's what this is saying. This is, I forget the source of this actually. But yeah, it does mean that they don't move with the times and they're stuck in the ages. Um, and I think this is quite good because it helps you to understand. Sometimes you find people are stuck in the art ages and you're like, why are they stuck in the art ages? And it's because they have a rigid um, mentality. So if it, uh, if is... It is as if they've created an arctic tundra inside their minds and frozen their memories and thoughts in it. So what they're saying is that they have this uh, way of thinking and it's like it's frozen in time. They've frozen it in their brain and um, everything in there is just frozen. That's bizarre. 
Having opinions, conclusions and preconceived notions saves them time and effort in making sense of the world and respond to it with appropriate decisions and actions. So they feel much happier and safer if they know exactly what's happening. They know exactly how something's going to pan out. They don't know how something's going to pan out. <coughs> they get anxious and worried and they need to, but because they need to know. Mental rigidity is not about having opinions, but having fixed opinions and fixed patterns of thinking that are hard to overcome. So, um, yeah, so you're, you're allowed to have opinions, but it's the fixed opinions, the opinions that no matter what anybody says, you don't, they don't absorb it, they don't take it on, they don't listen, they don't, it's just... It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's as though you are not there. So, um, yeah, fixed patterns of thinking. So, unfreezing your mind. I guess if you unfreeze your mind, it kind of allows you to be more flexible. It allows you to be more open. So, while you may remain stuck in your thoughts and choices, the world moves on, leaving you behind. That's limiting your choices, your relationships, your chances of success and your quality of life. So if you don't unfreeze your mind using that analogy, you just get you just get left because the whole world is going on and you're left behind. So what is the answer? Becoming aware of your rigid thoughts and beliefs and how they're influencing your worldview is the most important. Without it, you cannot overcome the problem. Become aware of how people and the world are influenced by various social, political and cultural biases, irrational and rigid thinking, and how many people refuse to think for themselves and blindly depend upon role models and public figures for their worldviews and opinions. So these are people, the people with fixed minds, they rely on uh, on role models, people who are looked up to and public figures for their information to teach them and um, they don't think for themselves. Wow, that's interesting. So these are the type of people that they'll always be quoting what other people say as opposed to thinking it out, thinking it through, trying to work it through. Ah, okay. Another thing, listen, learn to listen and appreciate other people's opinions. This is about how to get out of this rigid mindset. So the first one is become aware of your rigid thoughts and beliefs. That's the first thing. The second thing is learn to listen and appreciate other, other people's opinions on any given subject that interests you as a learning experience and to expand your own awareness. So that's about if you have, um, if you both um, have an interest in, a, in the same subject, don't just, um, don't just say, oh, I've got this viewpoint, this is the way it is. Listen to the other person's viewpoint, absorb it, and maybe you can learn from what the and learn from the other person's viewpoint instead of saying this viewpoint is the correct viewpoint and this is the only viewpoint. That's my interpretation of that. Especially listen to those opinions that you dislike or disagree with. So if somebody says something, if somebody has an opinion and you don't like it and you disagree with it, that is the opinion you should listen to and see if there is any value in it or see if you can learn from it. Um, and to those who are not afraid to speak their minds, yes, yeah, so these are with people with fixed mindsets or rigid mindsets, they need to speak to people who are not afraid to speak their minds. When you interact with others, listen with an open mind for learning and introspection. So this is like this is like a learning exercise actually for those people with rigid mindsets or what we call the inner dictator. It's about being open to learn, being not assuming that you what you know is right and not assuming that you have the answers. Um, number three, learn to ask questions and seek answers. 
A person with a closed mind does not ask questions. He neither accepts or rejects information based on his upon his likes and dislikes or emotions. So people with a rigid mindset, they actually don't ask questions. They don't want to know because as far as they're concerned, they have the answer. So they're not interested in ask, asking questions to validate anything because they've already got this preconceived notion of what is the right, what is the right thing then or very bizarre. So what this person does, he either accepts or rejects information based on his likes and dislikes. So if he likes something, he's going to accept it. If he dislikes it, he's going to reject it. No discussion. I say he, but you know, he or she. No discussion. Um, and it also says based on their emotions. So if they feel it's right, it's right. If they feel it's wrong, it's wrong. They don't have to have no evidence. That's that's it. A rigid mindset. God forbid. Could you imagine if these people were in a court or judging you for a, a crime? Hey, I wonder how many judges and, and people on the jury have this kind of mindset. Can you imagine? Because that means no matter what you say or do, you're screwed. Because they can't be swayed. That is scary. I bet there's quite a few of those people out there who think like that. And especially some of the older people who are very rigid in their thinking. And, you know, they talk about, oh, you need to, you need to get with the times. But they still, they're still back and beyond. That is quite scary, actually. And that also applies to anybody who has power. If they have these rigid mindsets, they are dangerous because there's no way you can sway them to think anything else. They've got it in their head and that's it. That is the truth as far as they're concerned. I wonder how many policemen have this, this inner dictator. These police who are abusing um, our young boys. I wonder how many of those have that inner dictator mentality or rigid mindset. That would explain a hell of a lot. But the, the sad thing is, is that these people aren't open to learning. I mean, somebody like me, I'm always trying to learn. Anytime I do something wrong, or anytime something's not going right, or anytime I don't get a good response, I always try to go to myself and say, what have I done? You know, what's, well, how can I improve who I am then? But when you've got people like this, there's no self-evaluation, there's no self-reflection. They just believe that the way they are is right, and they're not going to change, and that's it. So you're doomed. So anybody in a courtroom, anybody in a you know, anybody up for prosecution, they don't stand a chance in hell. Um, anyway, where did I, how did I get onto that? By asking questions, you can keep an open mind free. For, oh, okay. By asking questions, you can keep your mind open, rational and free from judgment and bias. It will also give you an opportunity to examine facts and draw your own conclusions. But the problem here is that people with fixed mindsets are not going to believe, are not going to be interested in, the number one, they're not going to read what I picked up today. I don't, I don't, I don't think it was psychology today. It was something. I think if I find it, I'm going to put it in the link. But they're not going to, why would they even look for that information? Because if they believe what they say is right, they're not going to be open for development and learning. So it's like flogging a dead horse. They're not going to be asking questions to keep their mind open because they're not interested, are they? So they will be very judgmental. They will be very biased. They're not interested in, interested in examining facts because they think they know it all. And they draw their own conclusions. So four, challenge your own decisions. So this is where 
and conclusions and judgment to find the rigid belief assumptions and biases that are hidden in them. So that means that for these people, they need to challenge why they've made a decision, think about why they made it, and if they've made it for a particular reason, what is the reason that they've made it? And in, when they reach a conclusion, why they've reached that conclusion? Is there any form of bias? Is there any form of resentment? Is there any form of um, rigid belief in making that, coming to that conclusion that they're not aware, that they wouldn't be aware of if they hadn't read this um, article? I think they should have. Well, I, I think it's a shame because I think people with rigid beliefs are not even going to look at this stuff. And then they're the people who need it. So the solution to mental rigidity is openness and maturity. You cannot practice them without honesty, truthfulness, humility and detachment. Maturity means having opinions and conclusions based on upon your experience and observations rather than what you have been taught by others as true unless you have subjected it to rational verification so this is very very interesting maturity means having opinions and conclusions based on your experience and observation so you would have had to have experienced whatever it is you're telling somebody about or you would have had to observe um, the situation and then you can relay it but immaturity is when you're taking information from that has been from other people so you're allowing other people to teach you and you're using that information as true so that's like me talking to you on this video and you're you're listening and you're saying oh black white said this so it's true instead of basing whatever you learn on your own experience what you've uh, only your own experiences are valid they're the only thing that is real and true and your observations whatever you observe is real and true for you but everybody is different so you can't be taking information from somebody else and you don't know what their experiences is what their experiences are so that is interesting a mature person relies upon his observation and experiences rather than blind submission to authority he listens learns improves and adapts to changes and challenges keeping his emotions under control so that's what I said before you know mature relies on observation and experience Hmm. Well, I think that's why people are so interested in um, reading, you know, people who listen, who read biographies and who like to even watch videos about what people's lives, what they've done. I think they like to know people's experiences, but as long as they don't live vicariously through other people's experiences, that's fine. You find a lot of people, especially mothers, they live by, well, not mothers, parents, they live vicariously through their children. They haven't done anything, you know, they haven't achieved anything. And yet they say, oh, my son is a, my son is a lawyer. My, my daughter um, is um, an ambassador. Oh, my sister uh, has um, got all this PhD. Or my, um, who else is there in your family? My mum. She's a famous actress. They live vicariously through other people as though by association, that means that they have something, that they're worth something. And that's what that is about. You know, having your own experiences, your own achievements, your own observations. And you only get that through listening and learning and experiencing and improving yourself. And there's, it says detachment is the best antidote to mental rigidity. And detachment means where you just free your mind, you don't, you're not attached to anything, you're not attached to any thought or feeling. It doesn't mean anything. Being able to detach yourself, especially emotionally, it is so liberating. When you are not impacted or affected by another person, that is true liberation. 
too many of us we're attached to how how somebody behaves what somebody says what you know somebody shouts at you at work you immediately react you get hostile when you can actually detach yourself from it and think that is their problem that is them it's not me so it says to free your mind from rigid thoughts and find freedom within yourself, you must overcome your attachment to the world and the likes and dislikes you form with it. You must keep an attentive and open mind, willing to embrace the reality rather than your rigid beliefs and opinion. I really love this. Some people think that ethical codes about behaviour can dictate how we think. They feel that it's wrong to think bad things. And this is a recipe for inner dictatorship. You know, these people who are um, high and mighty, self-righteous, and they believe that if you think bad things, it's you're a bad person. You say something bad, oh, you're a bad person. You get people say, oh, if you behave that way, you can't be a Christian. Rigid beliefs instead of open and being flexible and, you know, those kind of things. We have social rules about honesty and politeness, but politeness often means social lying. Like over the weekend, somebody says, oh, how was your weekend? Oh, it's great. You know, when it's not, you know, you have those kind of situations. Somebody says, oh, you know, um, I overheard somebody say, oh, they went bowling and um, they... Um, forget what they said anyway something bad happened and then somebody else came and said oh it's your weekend and they told that person oh it was brilliant blah 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 blah, blah. went into one so um yeah you know it's social lying is kind of what i what i call it diplomacy i guess <sighs> so let me think um Many people who rigidly internalise the kind of qualities we're supposed to exhibit, which is duty, responsibility, selflessness, end up with clinical depression. So if you believe that um, people have a sense of duty or a sense of responsibility or a sense of selflessness, other, meaning they're supposed to think about, um, they're not supposed to think about themselves, they're supposed to think about everyone else but themselves you'll get depressed because that is reality so but that is what they because they believe that is the way life should be and when it isn't they don't know how to cope with that so i would imagine that having rigid thinking is quite confining it's quite limiting so play around with the contents of your mind in ways that completely ignore what you should or shouldn't do. So I remember when I was um, learning to be a counsellor, that's one of the things they said we should take out of our vocabulary. We should not say should, we should not use the word should. We, we, you know, because, and I think that is what they were talking about. We, you know, because that is a part of the limited thinking. Nothing is, nothing should be. You know, it's about flexibility and open-mindedness. You might want it to be that way, but it should. It's not necessarily that it should be that way. Okay. Um, some people believe that our level of happiness should reflect the circumstances in our lives. We should be unhappy at a funeral, and we should be happy getting married or promoted. But there are an infinite, infinite number of reasons in the world to be unhappy or happy. You can practice being happy or unhappy in a way that disregards circumstances. That's neurolinguistic programming. And it's also called something else. Object referral. And sometimes, I don't know how many of you have um, come across that video where a man says he was happy. Um, because he got a dog and then no he was happy because he got a horse and then the horse broke its leg and he was unhappy and then because he and because the horse broke his no no sorry he didn't the horse didn't break his leg sorry this was about a soldier and he was happy he was happy and then he broke his leg and he was unhappy and then he got called to go into the army but they couldn't take him um, because his leg was broken so he was happy 
and then something else happened his dog took him and he was unhappy so this is what they call object referral where your the way you feel your emotions depend on in your environment and what's happening to you and what people do to you and what people say to you that determines your happiness or your sadness and so this is what this is about you must practice being happy or unhappy regardless of the circumstances i don't know how no in a way that disregards the circumstances okay okay not quite sure how you can be unhappy and disregard the circumstances though because why would you be unhappy there has to be a circumstance to make you unhappy right anyway i've nearly finished um so what's all got this got and it's all to do with control um because um the control system is what makes people react to circumstances in a socially acceptable way when our inner dictator takes us over we overthink things and we obsess about things when we become defensive and attack now this is how you know your inner your inner dictator is working or you're prone to rigid thinking okay when we become defensive and attack rather than listen let false pride run us rather than stay connected with humility and dignity when we worry excessively about what other people think rather than connect with our core values and integrity and when we worry about image rather than substance we are living we are leaving the inner dictator in charge now i didn't mean to go on so long but i hope you found that interesting and if you know anybody who is it might even help you to understand people who've been behaving in a certain way and you're thinking bloody hell why why are they behaving like that why are they so rigid why aren't they flexible this is just a thought and you can always google um, mental rigidity and find out more about the subject if you're interested or you can um google the inner dictator it doesn't really have much about the inner dictator though but yeah okay and that's all for now bye bye